Hello, everybody. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have Alex Cole. She started in 2015 on Chatterbait and has now appeared in over 300 films. She's nabbed multiple AVN and XBiz nominations, and she was a 2021 Hustler Honey. So let's welcome all-natural camming sensation, Alex Cole. Hi, thank you for the warm welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And so sorry about uh, the technical difficulties that we've been experiencing. Just so you guys know the inside track on what's going on. We literally started uh, like 20 minutes ago and then had to start all over again because my internet sucks. So, <laughs> but, uh, but that's, that's okay. okay. Yes. You found a different, uh, a better angle for your I phone. Did, so. I think it, it has less glare on the glasses. <laughs> All right. So Alex, so let's start um, at the beginning. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into the adult industry? I know that you started with camming first. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was dating this guy, Max, and he didn't like that I was working three jobs and didn't have a whole lot of free time for him. So he suggested that I do webcam. And I thought that's not a real thing. Um, and he's like, no, no, like the live Jasmine pop-ups on, on Pornhub. And I was like, no, don't click on that. That's a virus. We share a computer. <laughs> and he showed me and he's like, no, look. And I watched cam girls on Chatterbait and my free cams for about two months. And I would say Katie Cat and Jolene Brody were the two that really got me excited because they were just so different, but very much themselves. And I was like, I would love to do that. If people would watch me do this, I would love to do this. So I figured out that one of my girlfriends was camming and uh, I didn't want to do my first show alone. So we did my first show was a girl girl. And then my next two shows were girl girls with her. And that was great. It was a really great learning experience. And after that, I broke out on my own. And so for six months after that, I cammed every single day for eight hours a day minimum um, so that I could really like immerse myself in it. And uh, it's it's been amazing ever since. I've, I love camming. Camming is still one of my favorite things to do. And uh, I love getting to talk to everybody. So then, so that's how I got into that. And about four years later, I was dating a different guy, Michael. And he encouraged me to jump into mainstream porn because he knew that I had wanted to for a really long time. But I didn't think that anybody would want to watch me. So I was like, ah, I don't know. Uh, but he got me in touch with agents he knew and really like didn't push me, but but gave me the resources to get started in a good way. And I really appreciate that. So so that's how that part happened. And I started in January uh, 2019 doing mainstream porn and I shot anywhere between 135 and 150 uh, scenes that year. So it's good. It's been good. So there's a couple of interesting things about what you just said. Um, the first thing that sticks out to me is the fact that you had your boyfriends, two different ones, <laughs> encourage you to get into the adult industry in, in different ways. And one of the things that I see from the feedback I get from my listeners is how men cannot comprehend that, you know, women, that, that they could possibly be in a relationship with a woman who is also in the adult industry, right? Because there's a sense of like ownership over your your girlfriend. And I could never be with a woman who like show even like, you know, doing solo or whatever shows yeah. herself off to other men for their gratification and definitely doesn't have sex with other people. Um, so how was that for you and your relationships? So they were two very different situations. I'll say that first, because the first one, he got me into camming because he wanted me to have more free time, which was great. Um, but he also, we had an open relationship, but, uh, it was less, it was less healthy. Um, he, he kind of wanted me to make a bunch of cam girlfriends so that he could fuck a bunch of cam girls. And I figured that out relatively quickly. So then I was like, oh, well you're making them uncomfortable. So I'm just going to go to their house instead of them coming over here. So that relationship didn't last very long. Um, but I still very much appreciate him getting me into it. And it, it, for him, I guess he didn't feel possessive over me because he was looking at the big picture of like, but if I share her with the internet, I get to have all these girls accessible to me. Uh, um, the ulterior motive. <laughs> yeah. So that one wasn't as stellar, but, but with Michael, 
totally different. It was very much, he does porn too. And so he just understood. He was like, no, this is a job and you already shoot content and you already shoot with people. So, and I shoot with people and I have a studio. So like, if you want to do porn, let's, let's help you do porn. So that was, that was more of the, the pure motive of you have a dream. I have the means to help you with that dream. <laughs> Let us away. <laughs> okay. That makes so much more sense if he yeah. was already in the adult industry, because yeah, I think unless you're, that. yeah, unless you're <laughs> in the adult industry, it's really hard to fathom the idea that this is just a job. Was yeah. he a performer? Yeah, he's Michael Masters. He's been in a bunch of movies and he has primalfetish.com. So he's I'm on a lot of those videos and he still shoots like my my bigger projects that I want to complete. I always call him first and I'm like, hey, do you want to make a movie? Um, so that's really awesome. And uh, but I will say um, I've had really good luck with men in the regular sphere because I've been single for about um, a year and a month. Um so far. (laughs) Um, and it's my first time being single as an adult and I've been dating and like seeing how all that is. And I haven't run into a single guy that had a problem with it, at least up front. I'm sure I've definitely heard stories of guys being like totally fine at first. And then later it's a problem, but I haven't gotten to that stage of any new relationship yet. So, but I'll say I've, I tried hinge and I've gone on a few dates from there and I didn't get any pushback. It was just like, Oh, that's really cool. I also live in Las Vegas, so that could be that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. So far, so that's, good. So wait, that's interesting. So wait, what did? What kind of reaction did you get when you told them? They just said like, oh, that's cool. I Almost mean, they must nothing. have been somewhat surprised. Almost, Almost nothing. nothing. Almost nothing. Really? I just met, okay, so I just met my possible future husband on a flight the other day because um, <laughs> we just meshed like this. And he's... I finally, I, I told him, I was like, well, here's my social media. And he went oh, and, looked, right. and he was like, no wonder you like wearing your mask. You're a, you're famous. And I was like, I'm not famous. And then, uh, we talked about, it. I was like, so how do you feel about it? Honestly, I need you to just tell me like, don't sugarcoat it. And he was like, it's a job. And he was like, and I think you're one of the most brave people I've ever met because there's no way in hell I could get naked in front of a hundred people, much less hundreds of thousands of people. So he's extremely supportive. So, I, but yeah, no, um, I dated a guy off hinge and he, he was, uh, working here in town and he's like an online, like announcer for like esports. And he was like, Oh, so we, we kind of have similar jobs. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so far, honestly, not a single, even like a blip, like usually it's like, nothing or, Oh, that's cool. How is that? There's always questions. Um, like, yeah, yeah, how course. is that? How'd you get into it? Like, how do you feel about it? Um, right. but at least, at least the men I'm running into have been very woke about not caring at least right now. Yeah. I would imagine you might experience something different yeah. once you get like into a close relationship with them or not. I mean, you know, I do know performers who date what we call in the industry civilians just means people who are not in the adult industry and like their relationships have worked out fine. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of girls that are, that are married and and all that kind of stuff. And people don't think that that's a thing, but I, I think the, the world is evolving faster than people want to give it credit for sometimes. Um, but the other thing about that is I'm fully prepared. I'm fully prepared to get a negative reaction and that's okay. Cause I don't require anyone to sign off on my life. So it's kind of like, if, if that's not cool for you and that's not what you want in a partner, tell me now and we can just be chill. It's fine. I also too, I mean, I personally very much believe in like the law of attraction. Cause I also too, like haven't, I mean, I know I don't perform in front of the camera, but I've never really had issues dating men either where they've like had a problem with what I do for a living. Um, and I think that, you know, I think that, you know, if you're in like a, if you're comfortable with yourself, if you're really comfortable with who you are, I think you tend to attract people who enjoy people who are comfortable with who they are and, and they tend to be less like possessive and insecure about what you might do for a living. So you just might have like really good vibes that you're putting out. And I, 
totally agree. I completely agree with that on the law of attraction and everything. I think, I think, um, I have camming to thank for being this confident. I was not this confident before I started camming. I was a very different person. And, uh, I suggest camming to anybody who wants to get into the industry because I think being in one-on-one -on -one or one on 10,000 contact with people that are going to be um, purchasing your content and stuff like that is really important uh, and getting to know the people that we're performing for and then in experiencing hate comments and taking it in and going, okay, does this actually need to have any kind of an impact on me? No. Okay. Here. Uh, so, you know, it might be a little rough at first to get like negativity, but you learn how to handle it. So over time, I've gone from being a very quiet, shy, unconfident person who didn't know who she was to being whatever the hell I am now. So, yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't it amazing though, too, how we like internalize those negative comments you can get, you know a thousand positive comments and one negative comment. And the one that you're going to remember is the negative comment. Yeah. I, I don't know. I actively choose to, to fight that. Um, I don't, and it, it's to the point now where it's kind of like it, it's automatic. So if I see a hate comment, I immediately think instead of like taking it in and having it be like, Oh, that's a thing that they really think about me. I think, I wonder what's going on in their day like that, that made them feel like this was a thing that they should send to a stranger. And then I, I kind of, I try to talk to them. A lot of the time, if you're in my cam room, um, we had a guy come in, I was doing a charity live stream on Christmas and we were raising money, uh, for a homeless charity, a uh, new story. It's really cool. Um, and this guy came in and he was like, fuck you and fuck you all. And I, I hate Christmas and I hope, I hope you guys have a terrible day. And I could have taken that and been like, oh, fuck that guy and blocked him easily. But instead I was like, hey, are you doing, are you okay? Like I stopped the show and I was like, hey, are you okay? Do you want to talk about anything? And the whole room, because I've cultivated it this way, joined in and they were like, hey man, it's all good. You can stay here and have a good day with us instead. And he ended up staying and hanging out for hours. And he was like, I'm so sorry that I acted that way. I was feeling really lonely. I am having a really bad Christmas. I'm by myself and I just lashed out and I shouldn't have done that. So like I, I, that's how I try to go for it. So it's a very positive. <laughs> I'm very proud of my, my guys too, because they kind of all, they jump in. They're like, Hey, you okay? And everything that's, good? That's a great story. That's actually, I've had similar experiences, um, where somebody came in and was like, I think it was once on my YouTube comments, like someone came in and said something really yeah. angry and negative about my, um, my guest. And then somebody else responded and it ended up going down this whole, like, t you know, and this guy ended up admitting that he was like an incel and a virgin. And he was just like really angry cause he like couldn't date women. And then like this, these other people were like talking to him about, um, you know, maybe how we could, kind of get over that anger or meet women. And then like in the end, he ended up apologizing. It was really bizarre. Like normally my yeah. comments don't end up going, turning into a conversation, but this one did. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of something I saw on the internet the other day. It was like one of those memes and it, I think it was like attributed to Robin Williams and it probably wasn't him who said that because you know, the internet is full of memes <laughs> supposedly Abraham said Lincoln. by, yeah, supposedly <laughs> said by celebrities that weren't, but it did say, say, and it gave me pause. It said, um, treat everyone with kindness, especially like those who are mean to you because they need it the most, something exactly. like that. And I was yeah. like, that is and so true. You'd never know what people are going through. So anytime somebody's mean to me, I just go like, oh man, you're probably going through something. Cause people that are happy, you know, people that are, that are angry like that, they're, they're not generally like happy overall. They're not like going through life, like whistling Dixie. And then all of a sudden they see you and they're like, you fucking whore. Like all of yeah. a sudden, right, like it's right. probably something happened and they're mad. And so that misplaced, but I, I try to keep it in mind. Like I can't control what anybody else does. I can only control what I do. So they might've come at me sideways, but I, I can respond with care. And if that doesn't go anywhere, that's okay. It's not that much effort for me. 
you literally just vocalized like one of my <laughs> mantras of life. Like no, no joke. This is something, um, I'm in a 12 step program and there's this reading that comes up a lot called acceptance is the answer. And for me, like it's really improved my quality in, of life to recognize the fact that like you cannot change the way people are. You cannot change extenuating circumstances. You cannot change the things that happen to you. You cannot change the things that people say to you. What you can change is how you react to them. That's the only control that we have in our life is how we react to um, situations that we are presented with. And if you can like really internalize that and really recognize that, I feel like it makes all the difference. It does. It so does. Because I uh, have struggled with anxiety for uh, my whole life. I got it from my mom. And uh, I, I've tried a lot of things. Like I used to have a Xanax prescription. Um, but this, ever since I started thinking like this, like I don't need my prescription anymore. I have it, I have panic attacks and stuff like that. But it, it always comes back to like that. That, that like I, I can only control what I can control. And there's no point in getting upset about this other thing. I just need to deal with it. So I love that. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Look at yeah. us. We're like, I love how like camming, like let us down this, yeah. this line of like <laughs> mental health. And, but I mean, that's, that's the great thing about, um, my show is that sometimes we go on these wonderful tangents, Yeah. but, um, let's get back to porn because sure. that's why we're here. Right. Oh yeah. Um, uh, so tell me a little bit about when you got into mainstream, like what was that transition? Like, how was it different from camming? Did you like it more? Did you like it less? Are there like pluses and negatives to both? Um, all of that. Okay, cool. Do you have a couple hours? <laughs> I mean, um, we have another 45 yeah. minutes if you want to spend the entire time talking about okay. that. Don't let me do that. Um, cut me off at any time. Um, so here's how the very first shoot went. So I, I signed with Hussey Models with uh, Riley and he flew, we flew me out to Miami and we set up two weeks of shoots for my intro to porn. Cause I was like, let's do it. Cause I'd already, I started off camming and then relatively early people were like, Hey, can you make videos? And so I started making solo videos and those were great. And I love doing that. And it taught me how to talk to a camera. Um, and then from that, they were like, hey, but what if you did videos, but with a penis? And I was like, that sounds fun. And so then I started filming Boy Girl. And I even shot um, my first, my uh, MMF bisexual three-way myself um, while I was just in the beginning of camming. So I was already shooting all the things <laughs> before I got into porn. So the I flew out and I was like, okay, this is going to be different. Let's, let's figure this out. What the first thing is makeup. I, I don't wear makeup usually. So getting put in a makeup chair and having somebody touch my face for like an hour was a little, a lot at first. I like it now. It's fun, but it, it was a lot. I, I didn't, I didn't like, I don't like how makeup feels on my face. So I had to learn how to not focus on how the makeup feels on my face when I'm performing. Um, it's also hard, hard too, because, you know, there's a lot of makeup artists out there and there's a yeah. lot of bad ones. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if whoever did your makeup did a good job or not. I'm like so picky about makeup artists. There's like two people that I will work with because I think that it's really like 50% of the results of the shoot. Yeah. Um, so, so I understand um, yeah. how that could be. I, I got really lucky with that that week. That week I had a great makeup artist and they did me right. Um, but there have been some scenes where I see the pictures and I'm like, first of all, that doesn't look like me. How did you make my face look so different? And other ones where I'm like, I look, I look much older than I am because it's caked on and there's those lines. So I started seeing that. So I, I don't know how to do makeup. So I got a friend of mine who's a makeup artist to take me to the store and help me pick out a bunch of makeup and then help me try to figure out how to do it. I'm still not very good at it, but I'm getting better. Um, so now I have a little bag and I slip it in my suitcase. And when the makeup artist leaves, I go in the bathroom and I go, 
okay, so if we move this this way and we wipe this off, then this will be fine. But oh my God, you were like every, you're like, you're like the girl that makeup artists bitch to me about. They're like, I'm sorry. She went in the bathroom and changed her makeup. I but- wait till they leave though. It's rude to do it when they're still there. Right. Okay. So here's the difference with my shoots and hopefully you would like my makeup artist. I'm sure I would. I like I try to, I try to hire the, the best people, but my people stay all day. So yeah. uh, they wouldn't yeah. leave. You wouldn't have an opportunity to sneakily do that without me catching usually, on. You, I'll say usually the women that stay all day are better. So I, I think that I have when noticed. You- I do think that when you have a shoot where the makeup artist does stay all day, it generally tends to be a higher production, yeah. which means that they're hiring better makeup artists. Yeah. So, so, so if I hear the makeup artist is there all day, I go, oh, then I don't even need to bring this. So <laughs> I still do just yeah. in case, because we all have it's nifty always, things. My yeah, main it's thing, not a bad idea. My main thing is my lips. I, I have a certain way I like to do my lips and, and almost no makeup artist does it. And so then I always go in and I, I touch it up because either it's always it's out of the line or in the line. So I like it to be right on my lip line. But yeah, um, I'm the same way. I actually yeah. hate it when people draw outside my lip line or when people try to give me what they call a Cupid's bow, that little indentation at the like top it. of your lip because I don't have one. I hate it when people do that. And I There's actually really only one person that I normally let do my makeup and we've worked together so often she knows my face, but even like the best makeup artists, a lot of times I'm not, I'm very particular about how I want my makeup done. So I get it. You can be amazing at makeup and still like get a face in front of you that you're like, I don't know what to do with this face. Like, you know, so I feel like there's makeup artists that know my face and those are the ones that I hire because they like, they see what my face is and they go, okay, I'm going to just accentuate what that is instead of, okay, so we're going to make her nose look thinner and we're going to make her cheeks look this way. And I'm like, no, I like how I look like just, just make the camera see what you're seeing right now in front of you. That's all I want. Um, but so So that was one big difference on, on just first off, it was kind of nice. I got to pick my first scene. Wasn't that different because I got to pick my male talent, which was nice. Um, who'd you pick? I picked J Mac. (laughs) I've never worked. I've never worked with him, but I've heard great things about him. He is an angel. He is. I, if I get a guy that wants to know how to be a good performer, I send them to J Mac or Prince Joshua. Like those are, those are the guys that talk to guys that I will send them to because J Mac is an absolute angel. Prince is great. I work with Prince a few times. Has Prince done the blowjob somersault trick with you? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh wait, not that one. No, it was a different thing. Not that I want to do that. I, he, so I, I don't even know how to describe it, but he, you got to see it. He does this like thing where you're like blowing him in a 69 and then he like does a somersault with yeah. you and like finishes standing up or something. It's like some crazy, crazy move. And the first time he did it, I freaked out because I thought he was going to like break the performer's neck, but like, I don't know. It's like no. this thing. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> surprisingly so athletic like it was it's he's very impressive though he's flipped me all around and done other stuff but not that one yeah um sorry the tangents are gonna be a consistent thing um that's okay (laughs) good um so uh the main difference i would say is when i'm filming my own content and camming i am very honestly they're all different when I'm camming, I have this feeling of like, I am in charge. Like I am, I am completely in charge. This is my world and you are in it. And so there's this intense confidence and I can do whatever I want. When I'm camming, I usually start by doing like dancing. I really like dancing. Guys will ask me to sing. I really like singing. Um, I'll do art shows. I'll do like, I just really need to come today. Like I'll, I do whatever I want. So I can, I can just show up naked. I can show up in whatever weird outfit I want. And, and it's just complete freedom for camming. Then when I'm filming my own content, I'm still not a hundred percent confident as a director. So sometimes it's harder for me to assert myself, especially if I'm getting pushback. Usually I'm good until I get pushback and then I, and then I falter. So I'm working on that. 
Um, and then when I'm doing that, I have to worry about the lights and the camera and I get very anxious because I can't do everything at the same time. And I'm a very, <laughs> I need control. So I, I want to be looking at the camera while doing the scene and I can't do that. So, <laughs> so that's, that's shooting my own content. And then with porn, I feel like it's the positives of shooting my own content, but with none of the stress because I trust that the crew knows what they're doing. I trust that the camera guy knows what they're doing. I trust that I am lit well, and I do check too, but but I mostly trust it <laughs> without having to check. Um, and I get, to, I get to act in a script that I haven't seen before, which I think is more fun than acting in a script that I personally came up with, um, usually, because I, um, yeah, I feel like after I say a, a line too many times, it gets robotic. So I really like getting a fresh script and going, okay, this is going to be great and figuring it all out right there on the spot. Um, so I guess, I guess with porn, it's kind of like all the fun of doing my own thing, but with, without the stress. So you, you talked about, uh, lines. Do you do like any, fe have you shot any features first of all, with like a lot of acting and, um, how do you feel about that part of the job? Because some people absolutely despise that part. They just want to do the sex part. And then for some people, that's their favorite. I don't think I've technically shot any features because I don't know what exactly makes a feature. But I've done a lot of I, I always ask for for acting roles and I'm interested in doing mainstream acting, too. And I. I, I beg for those. Like I, I, I try to tell my agent and then I, I try to contact companies sometimes and I'm like, hey, I really love acting. If you have any of that kind of stuff, I would really like to do it because that's my favorite thing. I, I do like to, and if it's a big script, I like to get it a few weeks in advance and I practice and practice and practice at home. So I, I really, I, I am not, I really like doing the acting part. That's my favorite thing about shooting mainstream porn. If it weren't for that part, I probably would have just stayed and done my own thing. Cause that's the yeah. part, that's the part that I, I get the most, um, joy from is, is, right. is when you nail that fucking line or when you're in an emotional scene and a t and you get the one, like you get the tear to roll down. I was doing one for pure taboo. And I was working with the anatomic crew. I don't know if you met them. Um, and uh, we we did this part where I, my husband had just died. And so it goes from a scene of me and him in the bed having a, like a good moment to me waking up in the bed, just full depression mode, filth everywhere. And I get up and I walk around the bed and my foot touches his sock. And I like pick it up and I just collapse and I stare at the sock and I cry. And and it just, it was so good. And then as soon as we cut, everybody went, oh my God, <laughs> that's that's what I live for, is, is that. <laughs> so uh, just cause you mentioned it. So a feature is um, when you have um, like multiple scenes that make up that are strung together for like a whole movie. Yeah. Um, like I know pure taboo is usually, I think what we call more of a vignette. So Got it's it. like, it's a story, but it's, it's like yeah. a one scene kind of story. It's encapsulated in like one day's worth of shooting. A feature would take multiple days to shoot. So, okay. So then, that's okay. That's the then difference. the only features I've done are for like primal fetish.com and for my own content where I'll shoot multiple scenes and then release them separately. And um, but they are, they're an overarching story. We did like a superhero one where I played Sapphire, which is a, a hero that he made up. And mm -hmm. so we have a three-parter on that where it's like um, uh, how I become a superhero and the first villain I fight, the second villain I fight, the third villain I fight, and my ultimate like defeat. So So I've done that, and that's really fun. So that's probably more of like a series because usually okay. a feature is really one movie. You know, it's weird though, because these days, like with the fact that with streaming and with the internet and the fact that like DVDs are dying, because back in the day, mm -hmm. a feature was like you, it went on a DVD and that's how most people got their content was on an actual yeah. DVD. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of, it's different these days. So, you know, like when there's like a big movie, you know, when I would shoot a big movie for digital playground, um, which was a feature, which was multiple 
days, multiple scenes. It went out on a DVD as one movie. It had one title, but then it was like the scenes were released separately on the website, but it wasn't a series. It was a feature. Right. So then like, I don't know. So it's actually a little bit confusing now. The lines have become kind of blurred. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of like, I feel like that's a question that maybe I should ask like a distributor. Like, is there an actual difference now with streaming? Cause like the DVD market's pretty much dead, even though mm -hmm. like AVN still bases a lot of their awards categories off of the DVD market. Yeah. Like, like I've been working in the adult industry for 23 years, but I've been nominated for very few AVN awards because I always worked in the web sphere. Like I didn't shoot features for DVDs. I shot for like scenes for twisties and for my website and other various websites. And these were just scenes and they never got put on a DVD and were sold in the right. DVD market, which is what made it a feature, which was what the only thing that AVN awarded yeah. But they've changed now. Now they have like web awards. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's all sort of confusing. It's, yeah. I think we just have to catch up with the technology and it is hard to catch up with the internet. I mean, that's that's a lot to catch up on. Um, and it's always changing and growing. It's amazing. Welcome to the internet. Um, yeah. God. If you've seen yeah, that. Did you see the Bo Burnham uh, Inside on Netflix? The what? Uh, Bo Burnham's uh, movie. I guess it's a movie Inside on uh, Netflix. I'll have to talk to you about that later then cuz there's a okay. song on it called Welcome to the Internet. So. Oh, okay. All right, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, we we All sing right. it in the cam room a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to come back and we're going to hear a lot more from Alex, so hang tight. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates. All right, we are back. So, <laughs> so Alex, you um, obviously through camming, you've developed probably pretty close relationship with your fans. I mean, you definitely um, connect with them on a level than more so than people who maybe just do mainstream porn do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so tell us maybe a little bit about your fans. Like, what that connection is like. Do you ever get recognized when you go out in public? Have you ever, um, like met up with a fan in real life? Like, you know, I, I know probably at conventions you have, but just tell us a little bit about your fan base and your relationship with them. Sure. Um, first off, yes and yes. Um, so let's see, as far as the connection with the fans, I have guys that I started, I started camming about seven years ago. Um, and I have guys from that first show that are still my friends now that come to my shows now. I have guys who watch my shows with their wives and their girlfriends or with their boyfriends. I have a lot of gay fans. Um, and then I also have had fans who contact me about things like helping them with their finances because I can be a little dominant. So if I tell them not to spend money, they won't. Um, or helping them lose weight. I get a lot of requests for that, like weight loss encouragement videos and things like that. I actually just filmed a cameo this morning that was, um, it was one of my friends on OnlyFans. It was his one month sobriety day. And so he was like, hey, can you just send me an encouragement video for my one month sobriety for when I stumble in the future and, you know, feel free to make it funny. I know how you are like kind of a kind of a thing. So I, I find immense personal fulfillment in being able to kind of be a friend and a confidant for a holy fuck shitload of people. Um, it, it makes me really happy. Um, so that connection is really special to me. I, I had, um, my friend Greg, who has been watching me since the beginning, used to talk to me about his daughter because she's my age and she was having a lot of mental health struggles. 
And he was like, when I, when I see you succeeding, it makes me think that, you know, there's, there's hope and that she's going to pull through. And like, we would like get on video and she'd play the guitar and we'd all just talk. There's guys that, um, watch my cam shows, but anytime I start to do anything sexual, they're like, I'll be back. Uh, I don't want to be here for that. Uh, and then I'll be doing a, it happens all the time where somebody will tip for a cum show and I'll be like, all right, we're getting out of chat time. We're going to a cum show. And like a hundred people will fucking leave. And they'll be like, we'll be back in an hour. You usually take about an hour and they'll come back early and they'll be like, oh my God. And then they'll leave and come back later. <laughs> so that's so interesting. I, they're great. They're really great. I talk to people about my fan base and I feel like a lot of people are surprised. And I think it is just because I am consistently myself and I don't judge people. I don't judge people's kinks. I green light a lot of people. I've had men cry while talking to me about their kinks because they've been yelled at before. Like I had a guy that really liked rib bones. Like he likes how they look and I was doing a stretch. And so he contacted me after and he was like, Hey, like, I just need to talk to you about this. And I just, please don't yell at me. Like if, if you want me to stop at any point, just talk, stop me, but don't yell at me, please. And he'd been yelled at by girls before and told that he was like problematic and that he was, um, encouraging anorexia and stuff like that because he thought that women's rib bones looked pretty. And so like he cried and we talked and, and connected and I ended up doing a bunch of rib bone content for him. And he's, he's a lot more confident now about that's a thing I like. It's, you know, it's not a bad thing to like that. Um, so that's, that's my favorite thing about any of this. And I feel like that's a really strong connection. Um, and I forgot the yeah. other question. <laughs> That's okay. um, yeah, no, I, I definitely, I've heard from a lot of sex workers, you know, talk to me about relationships that they have with their fans and, um, you know, men who come to them who have kinks and, and they're afraid to talk about their kinks um, with their girlfriend or their wife or whatever, yeah. whoever their significant other is. And they feel like they can confide in sex workers about that kind of thing because, there's like a real intimacy to that relationship. And I think also too, because we work in the adult industry, people feel a little bit less judged because it's like, we're like the black sheep of the entertainment industry. So I'm like, who are we to like, right. to, you know, say to make any judgment calls considering all the stigma that we face on a regular basis. Yeah, I've heard so many stories, um, you know, especially since starting my podcast about like the therapeutic benefits of having relationships with sex workers yeah. And I feel like it's, it's beneficial for me too. It, it, it lets me kind of get out that I have a very strong mothering instinct. And so, and I, I can't have children. And so I kind of, I've, I've adopted the internet men as my, <laughs> I, I'm just like, Oh, let me take care of you. Like, come here. Everything's fine. <laughs> the girl was mean to you. You don't deserve that. <laughs> like, so, and I tell them when they're wrong. Cause it's not all, it's not all candy and roses. So if somebody comes in and says something or does something, I'm like, Hey, that's not how we act here. Like, so, so there's that too. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, there's nothing like it. So Alex, uh, you recently recorded your first audiobook. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that was really crazy, but really fun. Um, so I got contacted by the publishing company history of books and they asked me if I wanted to be the narrator for Gina Gerson's autobiography. Um, and I, my first question was, well, the first thing I said was yes. And then I said, why, <laughs> how did I, how did I come across? And, um, I guess Gina and the publisher had talked to a few different directors and I had been recommended. And after I'd been recommended, she went and looked at my YouTube channel and she liked my voice. And she liked my personality. And we actually have a lot in common. We're about the same age. And um, we both had rough childhoods. So it was kind of, you know, it was really interesting reading her book um, and seeing like the parallels in our lives. And um, so it was a very, it was a very honored kind of experience where I was like, wow, I'm the one that gets to, to speak this into into existence so that was that was crazy and then we we filmed it or we recorded it and the files um were not recorded properly because it was the first time that 
any of us had tried doing this. And so we had to re-record the entire book. So I had to re-narrate the whole book and I just finished doing that. So we're a couple months behind on release, but uh, yeah, I, I got to do it twice. <laughs> you do have a nice voice. Um, that's you. that's so interesting. I mean, have you ever thought about doing I want anything to. in like the voiceover arena? I, I would really love to. I'm, I've been talking to a couple people about how to try to figure out how to get that to happen. But I, I do a lot of weird voices. Anybody that's been with me on set on a, on a day where I'm bouncing all over the place knows that I, I just randomly do a bunch of different voices. Um, and so, I, yeah, I would really like to do that. I would like to get into voice acting and I would like to get into mainstream acting on top of everything that I do now. Do you feel that the fact that you work in the adult industry might like that might be difficult or problematic for you? Or do you think that like the world is changing in terms of the stigma that surrounds our industry? I think the world is changing. Um, but I am realistic. I, I completely accept that that could absolutely be a problem. And if it is, uh, I'll deal with that when it happens. And I, and I was talking to Sandra, my agent about it too. She was, she was like, well, do you want to quit porn? Cause you might need to quit porn in order to do mainstream. And I was like, I want to try to do everything. Um, and if I can't, that's fine. It's kind of the same mentality that I went into porn with where I was like, they might not want to watch me at all, but I'm going to try and see what happens and then get the input and then go from there. So like, I'm always asking for constructive criticism and input. So I would try to try to figure out a way to make it work. But, but I'm realistic. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you take, you make 0% of the shots that you don't take. Right. Yeah. And I actually, one of my good friends and somebody who I'm, I'm going to be interviewed for her podcast tomorrow. And then she's coming into town and I'm interviewing her in a month, um, is Lisa Ann. Oh, and she's a great example of somebody who's moved from adult into mainstream. She has a successful show on Sirius radio. She does fantasy football stuff. She's very like sports oriented and she's really like a great example of somebody who's moved from adult into mainstream, like pretty successfully. And she's never, you know, disavowed what she did for a living. She's never, you know, tried to say like, oh, I made a mistake doing porn and it was, and I regret it. And I want to be mainstream now, like right. some other people. Um, and she's had a successful time of it. So I do think that, yeah. I, I think that there are definitely challenges and roadblocks that, that people experience, but I've also like heard, you know, Sasha Gray's also another yeah. example of somebody who's done really well in mainstream. So uh, Jesse Andrews, another one, she's like got a fashion brand now. So it's like, it's totally possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I think that, you know, I, and I think, you know, kind of goes back to like the law of attraction, right? Like what you put out there is what you get back. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's, yeah, I completely agree with everything. We have similar philosophies. I like that. <laughs> Same. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I do want to make sure that you and I have enough time to do our little exclusive Q and a that we're going to do for my Patreon mm -hmm. members, which you will only be able to access if you're a member of my Patreon, but I do have some questions for you from my subscribers. So if you guys want to hear, um, more about Alex Cole, make sure that you join my Patreon at patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Um, but for now we're going to sign off here. So Alex, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Well, first off, I'm going to say, go join the Patreon. And then, um, it's really easy. I put all my stuff in one place. So if you go to alexcolexxx.com, all my stuff is there. So it's A-L-E-X-C-O-A-L-X-X-X.com. That's it. Perfect. Smart. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. I just mentioned my Patreon page. I'm also on TikTok and I've been like putting a lot of effort into my TikTok. I'm actually Ooh. surprised. It's like blown up. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, which I'm so excited about because I was at like 300 like a month ago. So um, I pull a lot of clips from my podcast and put little sound bites in there. So go check me out on TikTok. It's uh, at Holly Randall Unfiltered. And um, of course, if you're listening to this, you can always watch these interviews on youtube.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then you're already in the right place. 
<laughs> Alex, thank you again for your time. It's been such a pleasure and uh, stick around so we can do our little bonus Q&A. Yeah, I'm excited. And then we're going to share TikToks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs>